Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I thought I would sit down and do another video for you guys while I'm already sitting here. thought I would answer one of the questions one of my regular people asked. He said, hey, could you go into a little detail? I don't understand how carbohydrate intake doesn't contribute to fat storage in humans directly. Um, calorie surplus is a calorie surplus. What happens to the extra carbs? And that's a great question. Okay, so when we're dealing with this, what we have to look at is what has been studied in the lab, right? We don't want to deal with, with any sort of weird hypothesis, you know, because people come up with all this stuff of, of well, you know, it's excess sugar turns into fat. Like, look, this, this simply isn't true. It's not true. Uh, first of all, it's, if we were to use common sense, if, if we were to step back and before we had all this, this research, if you were to just take basic biology and think it, think it through, because we've confirmed all this in the lab later that yeah, it turns out this actually is true. And it makes sense because it's the most simple route. Okay, human, our bodies are pretty efficient. So generally speaking, we prefer carbohydrates as a fuel source. We don't uh, like to convert carbohydrate into other stuff. All right, body fat is a reserve to survive famines. By and large, it is metabolically expensive to convert carbohydrates into, into fat. It is not a direct, hey, this is just an easy molecule that we just, a minor change and it turns into body fat. It's not that straightforward. It actually requires calories to be burned to even convert it. So even when we make cholesterol, which is, again, a lot of our cholesterol in our bloodstream can come from our, our carbohydrates um, through the DNL process, but we can use that to make hormones and other stuff. Uh, so again, that kind of debunks the idea that you need a lot of fat to make hormones. It's just silly. Because we can, we can make that through de novo lipogenesis. But it's a very small amount. Um, but it would make sense when you think about it that, yes, obviously it's easier to store fat as fat than it is to convert carbohydrate into fat. That's common sense. Uh, and earlier studies did find that, yeah, you could, you could take the body fat biopsies of a person and tell the composition of their diet to some extent based upon how much saturated fat and monosaturated fat and whatever was in their body fat. It does, it's, reflect, it's reflective of what our previous diet has been in the storage of that. Uh, studies as far as the 90s went back and found that, you know, per day, some of the stuff even in the 90s, they were, they had less sophisticated equipment. Like it looks like only about five grams a day in humans from the studies they did then were, were able to, were coming from carbohydrates. So only about five grams of carbohydrate a day were converting into fat through de novo lipogenesis. All right. The more modern studies have found that when the, the carbon isotope testing has been done, and there are PhDs in the field who, who have videos up on this, on YouTube, by the way. That 99% of the fat in your body is coming from dietary fat. About 1% on average in humans is coming from, from dietary carbohydrate, and none of it comes from protein. Protein just doesn't really have an accessible pathway to body fat. I mean, there's hypothetical, but in practice, it doesn't happen. So... That's what we're finding. So then the topic comes up of, well, what about studies showing de novo lipogenesis? Well, a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, in, the car, in the carb overfeeding studies that were done in women even about 10 years ago, it was a small amount. Like meaning when they added something like a thousand calories of carbohydrate to a diet, the first day only like one gram of it stored. Only one gram of it stored is, is body fat or even converted to de novo lipogenesis. Now it's been noted, people are like, but some of these studies on athletes show it's higher. It's, it's higher in lean people. And that makes sense because when you get really lean, really, really lean, your body is kind of like, mm, probably need to find a way to get a little bit more, more fat, even around our organs or liver, whatever. So it will convert it at a higher rate. But that's what's been found. Really lean people do have a higher potential for de novo lipogenesis than people at slightly higher body fats. Just that has been found, but where is it storing? It's not storing under your skin. All right, so when we go look at the data that we have on that, and you go look through the variety of studies, there's a lot of them, the de novo lipogenesis doesn't cause subcutaneous fat. So when we talk about that 1%, or, or in some cases, maybe a little more for really lean people, that's around your organs, that's in your liver, okay? 
that's not outside your abdominal wall. That's underneath your abdominal wall. Okay, it's all on the inside. All, virtually 100% of the fat that we have under our skin is from fat you eat. Almost all of it. Per, pretty much 100%. So people were asking them, well, what happens to the, to the rest? It can't just do nothing. Energy can't be destroyed. All right, this is where calories in, calories out matters. People always say, well, you know, your calorie isn't just a calorie. You can't just measure calorie intake only. Well, yeah, that's true because calories out is dependent upon the composition of your diet. All right, excess carbohydrates, since your body will burn carbohydrates first, your excess fat gets stored. All right, uh, if you really carb overfeed, almost all the fat you eat will be stored. And it makes sense because we prefer to burn carbs. Now, people who say, aha, so if you just don't eat carbs, well, no, because then you'll just burn fat and then still store your excess fat. Does that make sense? Let me explain. If you add a thousand calories of carbohydrate to your diet, your body's going to burn that first and it's going to store the fat that you're eating. Okay. If you add a thousand calories of fat to your diet and there's not enough carbohydrate to fuel it, it's going to burn some of that fat for fuel and it's still going to store all the excess fat that you eat. In fact, you'll probably gain more fat from adding the 1,000 calories of fat. Now, people are like, but I'm losing weight. You might be losing water weight because your glycogen depleted. But yeah, so your calories out goes up. So it goes through a few pathways. Number one, thermic effect of food. So that's one of the things that's been noted is that when carb overfeeding happens, thermic effect goes up. Your, your mitochondria and your muscle cells tend to burn it off. Do some of the uncoupling proteins and things in there, they burn it off as heat, number one. Uh, number two, it ramps up your thyroid. Ramps up your thyroid. So thyroid output goes up. Conversion of T4 to T3 goes up as carbohydrate goes up. See where we're going with this? In other words, your body starts just burning. Your, again, metabolism, metabolic rate, climbs. This is why you're seeing some of the better experts, even who coach bodybuilders who have advanced degrees, are like, ah, I want to keep your carbs as high as possible when ripping down because it'll keep your metabolic rate higher. Okay. Then we have the neat impact. And again, I pointed out in the, in the thing, people who are insulin resistant don't get this as much because it's, it's, they get low blood sugar and other things as this happens and they tend to be lethargic. Well, that's, that's going to cause more fat storage not necessarily from the carbohydrate, but just less energy turnover. And then they're eating all these carbs and that's the only thing they're burning. And then they just store every every single drop of fat they eat, uh, like probably down to the last gram. And they're hungry all the time, so they're gonna eat more of it. But what happens is NEAT also goes up. So if you start adding carbohydrate, carbohydrate, carbohydrate to your diet, what happens? You move more, you fidget more. So it's not just through metabolic rate, it is through other activities. You're gonna be more active and hyper in general. So that can sometimes burn another four or five, 600 calories a day just from the extra NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So when someone says, well, what do you mean? Calories can't just disappear, it still matters, uh, you know, so where do the excess carbs go if you were to just eat really low fat and eat tons of carbs? Well, that's what happens to it. Right, your body doesn't readily store a lot of carbohydrate as body fat, and when it does, it tends to be visceral, and it's not huge amounts. It's not massive amounts. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. I'll talk to you guys next time.